Ten women, decades of accusations, a not guilty verdict, and four new counts of child sexual assault. The case of Tim Gemelli of Slidell is a long and complicated one. Yeah, and there are so many questions about sex crime charges in the era of Me Too. Eyewitness investigator David Hammer is joining us now to tell us what he found about this case. It's really disturbing. Yeah, Katie and Tom, I've been looking into these allegations about Jamelli for the last three months, and they are extremely disturbing. They involve 10 alleged victims in four states over more than three decades, but Jamelli has never faced significant punishment for any of them. These women all say they were molested as small children. Rhonda Bordelon in 1981 when she was six. I knew something wasn't right because of the physical pain I experienced and that pressure, and then I always felt the tears and I always wanted my mother. Ashley Petty from 1990 to 1994 when she was between three and seven. He would hold me and put his hands down my pants and tell me, this is what daddies do for their princesses. And I was always daddy's little princess. Destiny Jamelli from 2001 to 2005, from ages four to eight. Just laying in the bed and watching my mom get ready for work and we're laying there and he was had his hand in my pants. Sarah Johnson told police about incidents from 2003 when she was five, all the way up to 2012 when she was 14. And all these women allege they were molested by the same man, Tim Gemelli. And they say they've been seeking justice for decades. It's a pattern of destroyed children. It's a pattern. All told, at least 10 women have accused Jamelli of molesting them as children in four states over a span of 34 years. And yet, only the 1981 case involving Bordelon resulted in a conviction for Jamelli, a six-month suspended sentence for indecent behavior with a juvenile. A six-month suspended sentence for an alleged sex offense is, uh, well, it's highly unusual. Jamelli's defense attorney, Gary Wainwright, says his client is innocent of all charges, even the one for an unspecified lewd and lascivious act that resulted in the indecent behavior conviction. That there were no records of any sort with respect to what occurred during that event. The next allegation came from a woman who dated Jamelli in Mississippi and Texas. She signed this sworn statement in 1994, saying she reported to the Harris County, Texas Sheriff's Office that Jamelli had allegedly molested her two daughters, but no criminal charges were ever filed. Also in 1994, this Massachusetts family court record shows a judge found, quote, evidence which suggests that Jamelli may have molested Ashley, his oldest daughter. But again, no formal charges were filed. I'm not in a position to comment on the validity of alleged accusations that were made that Mr. Jamelli was never arrested for, charged with, or tried regarding. In 2017, St. Bernard Parish prosecutors did file aggravated incest charges against Jamelli for what his youngest daughter, Destiny, claimed happened when they lived in Chalmette in the early 2000s. Remember the feeling of the soap burning and asking him to let me wash myself, and he would say that I couldn't because I wasn't doing it good enough, and he had to do it. You have a person with a successful business, a successful life, whose teenage daughter makes an, an absolutely inane accusation, which literally was, I now remember that my father used to give me baths. Wainwright pointed to pictures like these of a happy family, implying sex assault victims would not act like this. We're family and I'm not just going to sit there and say, no, Dad, I'm not taking a picture with you. Wainwright told the jury Destiny's allegations were to get back at Jamelli for cutting her off financially in January 2017. And when he cut her off financially, it was within 10 days that she walked into the St. Bernard Parish Sheriff's Office. 
even though she had already sent her father this letter in September 2015, a year and a half earlier, accusing him of physical and sexual abuse. It just shows that accusations were made before he cut me off. But St. Bernard Parish prosecutors never showed that letter to the jury. They told us they didn't think they needed it. They just kept saying, we're going to be fine, we're going to be fine. After an eight-day trial, a six-person jury found Jamelli not guilty. The day he was found not guilty, I came home and laid in bed for two days. Didn't move, didn't eat, didn't move, because I just wanted to cry. But it isn't over. Jamelli was charged earlier this month in Longmont, Colorado, with four counts of child sexual assault and one count of child abuse based on more molestation claims by Destiny and three of her friends. Claims that Wainwright says hurt, Destiny yeah. made up. She wanted to hurt him. And? And what about the other girls in Colorado? They want to hurt him that, that way too? Well, <clears throat> once they were explained that they had been molested in their sleep and were convinced that their being bathed was child molestation. They think that I called all these other girls and persuaded them to come forward. And did you? No. I mean, what would they get out of doing that for me? Prosecutors and Jamelli's alleged victims say views about sexual misconduct in the 80s and 90s caused girls to suffer in silence. Ortolan's mother, Janet Cusimano. The attorney kept bringing up, well, why didn't you tell someone? Why didn't you tell someone? Well, an expert would have been able to address that. They don't tell. But now they hope changing attitudes and stronger sex crime laws will bring them the justice they've sought for so long. The main thing, how no matter how uncomfortable this is for me, is that I just pray every day that someone does something to protect the little kids. If it keeps him from hurting anyone else, I'll do whatever it takes. Wainwright won't be defending Jamelli in Colorado, but he says laws allowing states to file such charges years or even decades later are simply unfair. I can understand this emotional argument of hashtag me too or hashtag you too, and we want to claw back into the past. And this is one of the examples of, of really this insanity. Now, Jamelli is currently in jail in Boulder County, Colorado, awaiting trial on the latest child sexual assault charges. His preliminary hearing is set for next Monday, May 6th. Wow, that is really interesting. And is there any legal outlet for the victims that have come forward now outside of the Colorado cases? Yeah, well, they actually are saying that they're going to go and testify in that case if they're called. And there's actually two other allegations in Colorado that have not been turned into charges yet, but could be in the future. That they're still being investigated. Correct. All right, All right David, thank you. Mm -hmm. And if you have a story you want the eyewitness investigators to look into, email your tip to eyewitness at wwltv.com.